believe that he can heal anything. He has no way to reproduce something genuine of that. Impurity, <laughs> debauchery, the sensual moves of the person. And then, and then look here, I want you to see this morning that you don't have an option when it comes to forgiveness. You know, remember that, right? And, and they, you remember that? And they put you in a circle, and you, you'd be there all night until you show no way your sermon title to today. To reap religion for God. Something you know, many of us develop businesses and ministries, that. but we don't leave room for God. <laughs> Praise God. This is, this is one of those times that even as a pastor, I say to those people that slept in, I, I'm not disappointed in them at all. You all came out last night and you really showed out, had a beautiful time, you packed the place, and we are going, those of us that are here this morning, we are going forth to do what God has called you to do, us to do. I need you to keep uh, Pastor Hines and uh, Joya in special prayer this morning because not only did they have to minister last night and today, they are ministry at the Spanish service today at one o'clock. So they're gonna be really, really tired. And uh, you know, so we're gonna keep them in prayer, amen? <laughs> Bow with me and meditate as I talk to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise you for all that you're doing in our lives. We thank you, Lord God, for opportunity to live and learn. And now, God, as the word comes forth, God, we will hear and obey in the name of Jesus. Amen? Come on, give God some glory one time, one time. Okay, we're in a sermon series called Respect Yourself. This title today is Authority. The lesson is for us to understand or at least to grasp in some part of the fact that we have to obey God's order. Now when I say order, I'm talking about the methods that he has put here in the land. I'm not talking about his direct orders at, at per se. I'm talking about the order in which God has allowed things to run on the earth, in the earth realm. And then, if there is an outcome, it has to be that being obedient will improve whatever situation you're in right now. Whatever you're going through right now, being obedient to authority will be the thing that will get you through. Amen? Amen. Let's look at the quote of the morning from Aeschylus. Obedience is the mother of success and is wedded to safety. Obedience is God's plan to protect our lives. Sometimes we don't want to listen to those that are in charge, but God has ordained an order so that we can be cared for by those that he has placed in authority. And then I want you to see this this morning. Our, our, our definition, English definition, is the act or practice of obeying, dutiful or submissive compliance, obedience. We have to learn how to come into compliance with our agreements. Do you realize that most things that you need to be obedient to or we need to be obedient to are things that we submitted to, things that we said we will do. And then the time came when we were asked to do something that we didn't like and we wanted to get out of the contract then. And so what's happening to us 
is we're paying this price because, because we violated God's order, not because we, 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 we did something against the particular entity, but it's because God has an order that we have to follow. Children, there's an order. We have to obey our parents. Th that's just an order that God put into place. Kings and uh, political figures and the authorities, the, the, uh, uh, those that are the, the law, the, the keep the law. It's our job to obey them. And there is a way, there's a proper way to protest if authority is not acting properly, such as there's a grievance process in most cases if, if a supervisor is not doing the right thing. There's some way that you can come against this person or thing without violating God's law. I want you to look at this word here. Hupakuo. Look what it means. I listen, hearken to, obey, or answer. You see, being obedient is operating with the pureness of heart within the system that you've agreed to be a part of. It is not, it's not complaining about the system that you said, I want to be a part of. And so what happens to many of us is we go out and we say, yes, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to be involved in this co contract. And so this contract requires you to pay X amount of money each month. And then when your time comes to pay, we want to avoid the contract. And so we need to operate in obedience. This is what he's saying. I listen, I hearken to, obey, or I answer. Here are your three points this morning. I want you to look at this. What is right, what is honest, and what is Christ-like? Do you know that you can do what is right, but you still might not be doing what is honest? Sure, if I, if I walk into a grocery store and I see a $10 bill on the ground, it would be right for me to grab it. We don't know who it belongs to. But, but if I wanted to go above what's right, because I didn't take it from anybody, I would want to be an honest person, then I would take it to the cashier's booth or I take it to the, uh, the, the little management booth and I would say, if someone says that they've lost $10, here it is. And you take it and turn it in. You didn't lose anything because the money didn't belong to you from the start. Now I know some of you saying, well, that could have been a blessing from God. Well, let me ask you this. When you dropped $10 out of your pocket, were you doing it because you were trying to bless somebody or wouldn't you like to have it back? You see, this is what, this is what living in Christ is all about. Now, you can be doing some things, you can be doing some things that are honest, but they're, they're not in Christ. Like, you can go and say, a uh, person walks up to you, and you decide to tell them all the truth about themselves. You're being honest. You mean, you nasty, you fat, you, you ugly. You could, be, you could be being honest, but are you being honest? Christ-like. And so today, these are the things we're going to look at. What is right? What is honest? And what is Christ-like? Would you go with me to Romans, the 13th chapter? Paul's writing this place called Rome. He's in Corinth. He's actually on his way to Jerusalem. He's taking money to the poor. He's never been to Rome. And he's writing these Christians that are living in these Gentile communities. 
Romans 13, uh, 13th chapter, I want you to hear what thus saith the Lord. First verse, listen. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. You see, God has blown an order of man into the earth realm. It's not something that we came up with. It, it, essentially, what I'm saying to you is that we cannot all be in charge. One person has to say, we are going to move this way. We are going to move that way. And others have to say, I believe in your leadership and we're going to follow. We're going to make sure that what you're saying to do is going to be a success. And he says this, the authorities that exist have been established by God. You have to understand that the order of God is governed by him. But what you have to accept is that it's executed by man. That's something that many of us have a hard time understanding. God's law is executed by those that are here on earth. So, so, so just using children as an example because we, most of us can understand that a lot easier and accept it. God has told you to God has told you to be good to your children and help them be healthy and so on and so on, right? So God doesn't come down and say to the children, you better eat your spinach. Who does that? Parents do. What I'm saying to you is that God's order is executed by man. So when you walk on your job and the supervisor gives you direction, you have to understand that there is an order that God has blown into the earth realm that gives that person the authority to ask you to do things according to the contract. In most cases, you have two choices. Do it or decide that I don't want to be a part of this contract. And so, as we begin to talk about obedience, there's actually no way that we can get around having to be obedient to people. Why don't we want to do it? It's, it's easy. People are infallible. People make mistakes. Sometimes they don't act like real leaders. And at that time, you want to abandon the contract. But see, none of us, after we've made a mistake in our household with our children, none of us walk up to our children and say, hey, listen, I made a mistake. From here on out, I'll take out the trash. We say, we say, hey, I made a mistake, but I'm still your dad. I made a mistake, but I'm still your mom. Because you cannot abandon the contract. What we find is that we get to a point in life where we want to make our own rules. Things are not going our way. Things are not what we thought they were going to be. And we start making the rules. It's a dangerous place to be. Most of us, we know what it's like to have someone to tell us to do something that we don't want to do. But we enjoy the benefits of the outcome. I went to a piano recital uh, a, a month ago, a couple weeks ago, and the young man said, his, his mother was a music teacher, he said, I've met so many people that, had to that told him, I regret that I stopped playing the piano. He said, but I've never in my life met anybody 
that plays the piano that says, I wish I had quit. Somebody had to say, you're going to play when you don't want to. Somebody had to say, I know you're tired. you got to practice. Somebody had to say, you will see in the end that this is a good idea. They'll say, well, you know, can I just do it like that? No, you're going to read music. Well, well how come I got to You're going to do it the right way. Why? Because in the end, you're going to thank us. In the end, you're going to say, I'm glad they made me. Guess what? Throughout your life, no matter how old you are, you're still going to go through the same thing. The only thing that's going to change is you're going to now be in a position where you can say, no, I don't want that help that God has given me through you. That's the only thing that's going to happen. When you're young, you're in the best position because God has appointed someone that has total authority over your life to help you do the right thing. When you're older, you don't have to comply. You have a choice. And many a time, those choices are why we're in our state of demise. Look at, he goes on. Paul says, consequently, verse 2, consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring punishment on themselves. Do you understand that many of these things that are happening to us are things that we have done to ourselves? We do these things to ourselves and then we cry out, God, you got you to gotta do something about this. Look what the devil is doing to me. No, most of these things we've done to ourselves. Now, I'm not saying that bad things just don't happen, but what I'm saying to you is this. Many of the things that we're struggling with right this second have to do with us being uh, disobedient to God. It will make you feel confused. It will make you feel unaccepted. You know what I tell people? I say, you, you need to get back in fellowship. Find somebody that you will listen to and then listen to them. Find somebody that you respect back enough to say I want to come under your authority and listen to him there is not one of us on this earth that should not have someone that they look to for authority show me a person that doesn't have to listen to anyone at all and I'll show you a failed plan Every person I know that has removed themselves from authority has failed, even though they feel as though they're a success. You know that people that walk off their job say, oh, I'm going to start my own business. And they're not ready. Because if you can't do what a supervisor says do, you think you're going to be able to handle some customers that's paying you? You know what they'll do to you? We have to learn how to come in compliance with people. It is one of the few things that I think I do very well. I'm not a person that walks around thinking that I'm an expert in anything, but the one thing I've learned over my lifetime is that if I obey authority, I will always move to the top. I've learned that when someone is in charge, that I will go to them and find out what they want me to do and I'll do it exactly the way they tell me to. I know how not to fight with those people that are in charge. I get in line with the vision. And let me tell you this, I don't change the contract because things not going my way. Whatever I committed to do from the beginning is what I'll do until the end. I found that it has protected my life. I found that it has opened doors where people have said to me, man, 
How on earth did you get in there? How on earth were you able to that? I'm obedience. I don't go change the plan. I check with those that are in authority even when they've given me permission to do nothing. They say to me, hey, you can do your own thing. I go check with them and I say, hey, is this okay to do? Understand that this is for all of us. It's not just for me. Let's go to the third verse. Listen to this. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right. If you're doing the right thing, you're not scared of the police. You don't have anything in the car. Police walk up to you and say, oh, you did this, that, and the other. one such a car. You say, go ahead. You start whistling, singing kind of songs and stuff like that. Because you know nothing's in there. And he says, he says this, but for those who do wrong, do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right and you will be commended. Do what is right. Let me tell you a little something about crime. I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you the way Solomon did. Solomon writes right around 935 BC. This is the smartest guy in the world. Doing his day and time and now. They talk about him in 1 Kings 430. They say that he was smarter or wiser than all of the children of the East. They begin to say that this guy is so smart. I want to read you Ecclesiastes 8, 11. You can get an idea of how he lays this out. I'm sorry, I'm just a little discombobulated here. Listen to this. This is what he says about crime. He, uh, Ecclesiastes 8, 11. He says, when the sentence for a crime is not quickly carried out, people's hearts are filled with schemes to do wrong. Let me read that for you again, just so, just so you understand. What he said, when people are not caught quickly, it makes them do more wrong. When the sentence for a crime is not quickly carried out, people's hearts are filled with schemes to do wrong. This is a piece of scripture you need to understand. Most people don't get caught the first time. The, when you ran a red light, that wasn't your first time doing it when the police caught you. You ran a whole bunch of them and got away with it. You found out that it was easy. That's why today I'm saying to you, do what's right because you know it's right. Don't, don't get away with it. You want to be punished. I always tell people, if you're, the best thing you can do for liars is expose them immediately. Because once they get good at it, because they can, you can get away with lying for so long, once they get good at it, they get themselves into trouble that they can't get themselves out of. Solomon, this wise man, you know what I mean? Here's a guy that domesticated monkeys. Here's a guy that built ships. Kings from all around would come and sit under him to learn about horticulture. He studied plants. And yet, he be, when he begins to write Ecclesiastes, he's in his old, olden years, he's seen it all, he's had more money than anybody else. And he says to us, here's what I've learned. When you get away with a crime, you're going to be encouraged to do more of it. We have to come into oneness with authority. Listen to this. Verse 4. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. The parent is not the enemy. I mean, you know, let me just, I'm not talking about anybody y'all know. But when I say, 
can you unload the dishwasher? Y'all don't know what I'm talking about, so be quiet. <laughs> when I say unload the dishwasher, that's not punishment. First of all, you ain't even wash them. If you came up with my thing, you know what it's like to wash the dishes. And when the uh, little machine you said, they think they wash the dishes because they put the thing in there. I'm like, you ain't wash no dishes. The thing washed it. And I ain't even asking you to do nothing but take it out of there. Oh my goodness, they cry child abuse. Y'all still don't know what I'm talking about. They ready to pick up the phone. Oh, you a mean daddy. Oh, I'm in the union. I should get paid for this. <laughs> you know, I said, man, you don't even know what it's like to wash, wash dishes. Well, I gotta, I gotta wash the dishes and I gotta take my trash. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bad daddy. Bad daddy. I ain't talking about nobody, y'all know. I'm just, I'm just talking about everybody children. Now, where was I? I was doing something for y'all got to start. Okay, here it is. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For the ruler do not the for the ruler do rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. Did you get that? It said, so if you are a guy that's not doing the right thing, you need to be afraid because those that are in charge, they have authority to correct you. And then, they are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring what? Punishment on the wrongdoer. This is God's word. This, 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 this is not something I came up with. I'm not smart enough. Verse 5. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities. Not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. What is he saying? He said, do it because it's right, not because you're going to get punished for it. He's, he, 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 goes, he goes and says, but also as a matter of conscience. You have to be wanting to do the right thing because it is the right thing. You know, 2 Peter tells us, um, second, uh, 1 Peter 2.13 tells us that we need to submit to authority. We need to become submissive. It doesn't mean that you will push over. I'm not gonna push over because I do what Pastor Mike tells me to do. I'm a success because of it. I'm not a push over because I do what did what my supervisors told me to do. It made me a success. When I say success, I'm not talking about anything other than the fact that I'm free. That I'm not confused. I'm not walking around in a state trying to figure out what am I supposed to be doing in life. I know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing, and I'm having a good time doing it. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not trying to figure stuff out. I'm not trying to live for other people. I'm free. And the little bit that I have, I'm fine. This is what I'm saying to you. Do what is honest. We have to become more honest people. How many times I, what, how many times I, I say, if you, if you get to work at 15 after 8, sign in the 15 after 8, don't put 8 o'clock. You didn't, you didn't get there at 8 o'clock. Just, oh, I got 15 minutes grace. Well, if you got 15 minutes grace, then put that on 815. You got 15 minutes grace. Or you can do the unthinkable. You get up on time. And go to work on time. The, the, the unheard of, you can actually do that. Here we go. Can I get it? <laughs> Listen to verse 6. For the, this is always why you pay I'm sorry. This is also why you pay taxes. Why wow, we brought the government into this? Now you know Paul, not at this point in his life, he already understands the government. He's worked for him. He's, well, not necessarily worked for him, but he understands him inside out. 
He knows how corrupt they are, but this is what he said. He said, this is also why you pay taxes. For the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to God. He says, this is why you pay into the system that God is using to execute order on earth. The people that are in charge are not the problem. It's the people that will not be obedient to the contract. Understand how to protest it. You know, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, with any of your children, you can try it on this one. I guarantee you, you can get far more done through reasoning than you can through just being disobedient. If you say, if you say, and, and I had a young lady come to me and said this, she says, um, Daddy, when I'm in <laughs> uh, <laughs> y'all needed to sleep in. <laughs> she came to me and she said, Daddy, when I'm composing, could you not interject? Because I'm actually composing. She's over there writing music, and then she plays the music back, and then she gets on the violin and plays to the music that she wrote. So I thought it was for me to join in. I was like, yeah, I like that part right there. Why don't you change that note? You know, that whole D flat was for itself much better. So finally, she came to me. Now, she didn't get disobedient. She didn't get disrespectful or anything like that. You know, she didn't say, be quiet, daddy. She came to me and said, daddy, when I'm composing music, can I, do, would you mind not interjecting? Hey, guess what? I won't bother her. That was the way to do it. What I'm saying is this. You should be more obedient. If you, if you operate within the system, you will see those that are in charge come in to compliance. Sometimes those that are in charge, they, they might not even know that they're being a little overbearing. You know, I, I thought they wanted my help. I was like, shoot, let me grab an instrument. I look at the little ball. I want to get in this. But guess what? It was compliance. It was compliance with the system. Able to come to me and say, you know, I, I'm, I'm writing. I'm writing. I'm trying to hear what I wrote and play it on one instrument and get on another instrument and another instrument to play it back. And right now, Daddy, I really want to concentrate. Hey, you know what? I'm, I come to compliance with you. Try it. Go to, go, go to those that are authority, authority by being obedient to them and saying, hey, listen, um, I, no disrespect at all. Or can, can I ask this? Do you mind if I ask this? You will get far better results. Give to everyone what is owed. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Do what is like Christ. Those are the three points today. Do what is right. Do what is honest. And do what is like Christ. Would you bow with me as I speak to you in the spirit? Father, there are people in this room that are in great need of this message. They become disobedient. As a result, God, they have become disgruntled. They have stepped away from their contract, God. They have walked away from their word. God, I pray that you will minister to them right now and that they will return to fellowship. And God, if there are things that are not happening 
in the proper order, God, that they will properly protest. I pray, God, that you will minister to them, Father, in the area of earthly compliance. Help them to understand, God, that you use people and that there is no way, God, that they can be obedient to you according to the words that I just read without being obedient to their authorities. Speak to them, God, that we might grow together as your people. In Jesus' name, amen. If there's anyone in this room that's never given their life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to say a prayer of you, you, you repeat after me just to hear uh, and, and say this prayer with your, your mouth, believe it in your heart, you hear your own voice. The prayer itself does not save you, but believe in it, we. As I look around the room, many of you are, are already, have already given your lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. We have three baptismal candidates here today. They have given their lives over. And, and, and so this prayer that I'm going to say is going to be for you to come into compliance with God's word as it relates to obedience. Would you repeat after me loud enough to hear your own voice? Father, in the name of Jesus, please forgive me for my sin. I believe in Jesus Christ. Is the Son of God. I believe that He died and was raised for my sin. Please accept me as a new obedient Christian. God, in 2017, I will work to be obedient to you. Slap <laughs>